Welcome to Graceland Church Online today. We are so glad that you have joined us. It's going to be a great day of celebration. As we begin our worship time today, I want just to remind you that it's Memorial Day weekend. It's a time where we honor those who have died in service to our nation. We want to say thank you for, to families who have lost those loved ones. Thank you for your service to our country and to us. The freedom that we have to be able to worship is because many have given their lives for us. So today as we come to worship, we're going to sing, we're going to celebrate. We're going to have a time to hear God's word. Pastor Ryan is going to be ending our series today on how long will this last. We'll be celebrating our graduates as they are graduating today. There are lots of things that we get to do to worship, to be able to come together. And in that, we also are looking forward to the days to come. Now, maybe you're new with us today. Maybe you're our guest with us. And we'd love for you to complete the information in our Connect card so that we can tell you more about all the things that are going on at Graceland. We are glad that you have joined us as we worship today. Graceland family. We're going to take some time in our service today to celebrate the class of 2020. When we picked today's service for our graduate recognition, we had no idea everything that would happen before you guys walked across the stage, metaphorically that is. But we are 
thankful as we celebrate and think about our class of 2020. You know, you guys have been such a huge part of our student ministry. And when we think about the heartbeat of our student ministry and the role that you guys have played in shaping it, investing in younger students, uh, serving the community, you guys have been so huge. And so we are so thankful as we celebrate you guys. Also, as we think about uh, college graduates as they finish, I, I see this as a class of leaders who have been active in student ministry and kids ministry and serving the community, uh, making disciples both in the church and out in the community in so many ways. You know, this class is such a special class of graduates. And so we are thankful and celebrate you guys. I want to leave you with a favorite verse. That's Proverbs 16, 9. It says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. You know, God has big plans for you guys in this next stage of your life. Sometimes he tells us what those are. Sometimes he doesn't. But I would encourage you all, spend time in his word, follow his spirit, and listen to the counsel of the godly people that he has put in your life, and you will see him working in great ways. So whether you're going off to school far away or whether you're staying here, my encouragement is plug in to the local church because that's how God will continue building your spirit and building your faith right now. We love you guys and look forward to seeing how God continues to work in and through you in this next stage of your life. So if you're watching right now, we want you to take some time to pray for the class of 2020. It's been an eventful end uh, to their senior year, but we know that God is working in big ways right now. So we're going to take 30 seconds uh, to pray for these graduates. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for these graduates. We know that you have been at work in their lives in huge ways over these years. And God, while things have been different these last few months, we know that you are still upholding them, that you still have great plans for them. There might be a lot of uncertainty in these months ahead, so we pray that you would give them faith and confidence to face whatever is coming up. God, we pray that you will make them lights in the world, that you would use them to impact and transform the community around them. God, we're thankful to be their church family, and we look forward to continuing to walk, side, uh, walk alongside them in these coming months. So God, we pray your blessing on these graduates, and that you would be with them in these coming months. Pray these things in Jesus' name. All right, so now we're going to get to hear from some of our graduates. So here is the class of 2020 from Graceland. Hi, I'm Anna Lowe, graduating from Jeffersonville High School, and I'll be attending Ball State University in the fall. Hi, I'm Bryce Dunn. I graduated from Christian Academy, and I'll be attending Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee this fall. Thank you for everything, Graceland. Hi, my name is Caleb Schultz. I graduated from Christian Academy of Indiana, and I'll be attending IUS in the fall. I'm Chris Ballou. I graduated from Christian Academy of Indiana, and this fall I will be attending Indiana University Southeast and studying chemistry. I'm David Estery. I graduated from Christian Academy in Indiana, and in the fall, I have plans to pursue becoming a firefighter. Hi, my name's Hannah Schultz, and I'm graduating from Christian Academy of Indiana, and I'm attending Grace College in the fall. Hi, my name is Ivy Clark, and I'm graduating from Silver Creek High School, and I will be attending Indiana University in the fall. I am Killian Conrad, and I plan, in, plan to go to landscaping. I'm Alexander Conrad, and I plan on going to Ivy Tech to do some cybersecurity. I'm Peyton Morgan. I graduated from Christian Academy of Indiana, and in the fall, I'm planning on going to IUS. My name is Reagan Faith. I'm graduating from Hillbrook Academy and Crosser School of Cosmetology, and I plan to get my cosmetology license and start working in a salon after I graduate. My name is Shelby Fouti, and I am graduating from Silver Creek High School, and I will be attending Indiana University Southeast in the fall. My name is Dylan Smithson. I just graduated from Smithson Academy as well as Prosser Career Education Center. At Prosser, I got a certificate in world technology and I plan to pursue a career in the world. My name is Olivia Hamilton and I'll be graduating from homeschool and I'm going into the workforce. I'm Sarah Bailey and I'm graduating from Corden Central High School 
and I'll be attending Georgetown College in the fall. I'm Brittany Wright. I graduated from Indiana University Southeast with a degree in secondary education mathematics and a minor in mathematics. My name is Kai Jenkins. I graduated from Indiana University Southeast with a major in elementary education. My name is Rachel Estery and I graduated from Indiana University Southeast with my degree in English Writing. My name is Matthew Durgan and I'm graduating from Ivy Tech with an Associates of Applied Science in Design Technology. Hey Grace and family and friends, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18, Be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you and for me in Christ Jesus. One, I just want to say that our church family continuing to give in the manner that they have produces great joy. We want to continue to pray and exemplify dependence upon the Father that the mission still goes forward through your giving. And thirdly, we just want to say thanks. Thanks for your continued posture of being sacrificial and giving to the church as we continue to press the gospel into our city and our state and our nation and the world through what God is using you to give. So thank you. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many. His mercy.
I'd like to welcome you to Graceland Church Online. My name is Ryan Brown, and I have the privilege of serving as one of your pastors. And this morning, before we dive in to our text, I would love for you to take a moment and bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we give you great thanks for all that you do and for all that you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And we pray this morning, God, that you would enlighten the eyes of our hearts and draw us ever closer to Jesus. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. I have a son. His name is Roman, and he is four years old. And Roman is like your typical four-year-old. He is rambunctious. He's adventurous. He likes to get into a lot of trouble. He likes to throw things. He likes to jump onto things. He likes to jump off things. He likes to punch things, kick things, the whole gambit uh, that you can imagine. And like most four-year-old boys, he has plenty of confidence. Not too long ago, he came up to me and he said, Hey, Dad, can you jump very high? I had to look down at him, and unfortunately, I had to tell him, Son, I cannot jump very high. And with all seriousness, he looked up at me and he said, That's okay, Dad, but I can jump over our house. A couple of years ago, we took a trip to Florida, and it was the first time that Roman had ever been to the beach. And this confident little boy was completely frightened the first time he saw the ocean. He got up close and his eyes were transfixed. And the next thing you know, he was paralyzed. He was frightened. His confidence completely vanished. And all that he could see was the crashing water in front of him. He was afraid and he lacked confidence. Have you ever been afraid? Have you ever lacked confidence? Maybe right now you're fearful because of all that's happening in our economy. You're a small business owner and you're just not sure that you could ever rebound. You have a 401k and you've looked at it recently and it's completely depleted and now you don't know when, if ever, you're going to retire. Or maybe you've lost your job. And you're just not sure that you're going to be able to pay the rent or put food on the table next month. If not the economy, maybe you have lost confidence in our government. You see these two sides and they're fighting against each other. And you just don't see any resolution in sight. And with the election coming up, you don't have much confidence that things will be resolved. But maybe for you, you're fearful of someone in your life. Maybe a family member, maybe a friend or a boss. And you lack confidence in them because they just can't seem to keep their promise. They say they have your best interest at heart, but yet they hurt you time and time again. And because of that, you have lacked, you lost confidence in them. And it's actually beginning uh, to, to see a loss of confidence in yourself. What is it that makes you fearful? What is it that causes you to lose confidence in your current situation? What is it that causes you to lose confidence in someone or something? In order to deal with these questions, I'd love for you to open up your Bible and turn to Psalm 27. If you don't have a Bible, you're welcome to uh, look at the apps, uh, the Graceland app that we have. You can follow along by clicking on the notes tab there. If you're watching this via our live feed, there's also a place for you to look at the notes. But like the majority of the Psalms, this one is written by King David. And I love this song because you have two different responses in a time of, of trouble, in a time of crisis. And I think that they are complementary responses that happen simultaneously in King David's life. You see, he both trusts in God, he has confidence in God, but then he also, he cries out to God. And, and he says to God, oh God, how long, how long, oh Lord, will this last? How long, oh Lord, do I need to wait on you? And so we see this awesome tension between confidence and dependence. And this morning with the time that we have left, I'd like to walk verse by verse with you through the first six verses in this psalm and maybe offer some insights into how you can also have confidence in the Lord in the midst of crisis. So with that, let's read the first verse in Psalm 27. It says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Um, whom, of whom shall I be afraid? Now in this verse, I, I, wanted, I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, we see that David calls God three different things. He says that God is his light. He says, he says that God is his salvation. And he says that God is his stronghold. And we're going to see how this plays out in just a little bit. In verse 2, we'll see how God is his light. In verse 3, we'll see how God is his salvation. And then down in verse 5, we'll see how God is his stronghold. But I want you to notice something really important here in this verse. And it's that David uses a personal possessive, possessive adjective to describe God. Did you notice that? He says, God is my light. He says that God is my salvation. He says that he is the God, he is, his, he is my stronghold. He is the stronghold of my life. It's completely different for me to say that someone is, or this person is a wife versus she is my wife. Or uh, she is a daughter versus she is my daughter. You see, I believe that David is able to have confidence in God and from God because of his personal relationship with God. Think about that with me for just a moment. David is able to have confidence in God and he is receiving confidence from God because of his personal relationship with God. But in addition to seeing confidence and the fact that it comes from a relationship, we also see here that there is a price to receive confidence. There's a price. Notice with me that David says, whom shall I fear? Who, of whom shall I be afraid? And, and the price for confidence is your fear. The price for confidence is your fear. Now, it doesn't make sense at all. God is, is saying, though, to you, give me your confidence, or excuse me, give me your fear, and in turn, I will give you confidence. That's crazy, right? It doesn't make any sense. It's certainly not a fair trade, but this is how this is how grace works. God is willing to take on all of your fear, and in return, he's going to give you back confidence. Now, hear me on this. Confidence is not the absence of fear, but rather what you do with fear. Confidence isn't just the absence of fear, but really it's about how you respond with your fear. So here in this first verse, we see that David calls God his light, his salvation, and his stronghold, and that we must give our fear over to God in order to receive confidence. But now I want to jump into verse 2 and unpack for you the first of three ways in which we see David look to God for confidence. So read with me in Psalm 27, verse 2. It says this, When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and my foes, it is they who stumble and fall. I love this because it shows us that God is light. You see, David is inevitably lost. He is walking around in darkness. There are evil doers all around him. Can you relate? Do you feel as though you are lost or maybe in darkness at this very moment? But what does David do? He takes that fear. He takes that feeling of isolation and he just gives that fear over to God. Once again, the price for confidence is your fear. So David, he cries out to God, and what does God give him? He illuminates the way for David. He lights up his path. Verse 2 tells us that his adversaries stumble and fall. So his adversaries will remain in darkness, but God will light up David's path. So this morning, if you feel lost, I want you to know this, that God has provided a way for you to be able to see. He has given you the light. He gave you the very light of the world. And this is in His Son, Jesus. Psalm 119 tells us that God is the light unto your path and the lamp unto your feet. Next, we see that God is also David's salvation. Let's pick up in verse 3. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. In this verse, we see that God is salvation. God will deliver you. 
Notice how David speaks of his enemies being encamped and they're surrounding him. And even though this is, a, is the case for him, he's not going to fear. Even though there's war and there's strife and there's crisis all around him, he still has confidence. How is this? How is this possible? Because God is his salvation. Do you feel surrounded this morning? Do you lack confidence because you feel like enemies are just everywhere? Every turn that you make, every corner that you go around, there's one more obstacle. Well, let me tell you this, that God has offered a way to take on your fears and in return offer you salvation. God has offered this through His Son, Jesus. By sending Him to this earth to die on a cross for you, He will take your sin and He offers you salvation. He will save you from all that surrounds you. But not only is God our light, and God our salvation through His Son Jesus, but He is also our stronghold. And so we're going to jump down to verse 5. Don't worry, we're going to come back to verse 4. But let's take a look at verse 5. It says this, For He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent, and He will lift me high upon a rock. He will lift me high upon a rock. In this verse, it's reaffirmed for us that God is truly our stronghold. Let me tell you this morning, friend, God will protect you. You see, David is in the day of trouble. But it says that God is his shelter. It tells us that God covers him, that he shields him, that he protects him from the storm. And in these very moments, you might be right smack dab in the middle of the storm. And unfortunately, notice with me that this psalm tells us that trouble will come. Trouble is going to come. This verse does not say that God will always take away the storm, but that he will protect you in the storm. God may not change your circumstance. He may not take away the storm, but he promises to shelter you, to protect you, to cover you in the storm. So let me ask you this, though. What do you do in the storm? Where do you go in the storm? I don't know about you, but for some reason, when it comes to the storms of our lives, the spiritual storms, the emotional storms, we like to stay outside in the storm. If it were a physical storm, though, if it's raining and thundering and pouring down, there's no way that we would ever stay outside in that storm. But we would run inside. We would seek comfort in our own home that has a roof, that has walls, that protects us from the storm. Yet so often in the storms of our lives, we don't seek shelter. We stay outside getting beaten down. Are you standing outside in the storm this very morning? If so, then I pray that you would seek shelter in Jesus. Jesus is our only protection from the storms of life. You can receive confidence from Jesus, who is our stronghold. As we finish up this morning, I want to encourage you with this. I want to look at the last two verses in verse 4 and verse 6 and see what do we do if we, if we know that our situation may not change, then what do we do? Let's read these two verses together. Verse 4, it says this, One thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. And then jump down to verse 6 with me. It says this, And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. They're still there, but now your head's lifted up above them. And then he says, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Friends, if there's one thing I could want you to remember from this sermon, it's this. Hold on to this this week. Write this down. It's this. Confidence doesn't change your place. It changes your gaze. Confidence doesn't change your place. It changes your gaze. David doesn't dwell on the fact that troubles are surrounding him. He seeks the presence of the Lord. Davis, David doesn't focus on what's troubling him. He lifts up his eyes. He lifts up his head and he gazes at the beauty of the Lord. David doesn't concentrate on all the ways that his life could be easier or better. Instead, he desires to dwell in the house of the Lord forever and to sing praises to God. Confidence doesn't change your place. It changes your gaze. And this 
This should be our response in the middle of the storm. Let me go back to the story I started with at the beginning about my son, Roman. He sees the ocean for the very first time. He is afraid. He has lost all of his confidence. His eyes are focused on the wind and the waves and the waters crashing all around him. And he's paralyzed by fear. And this usually confident little boy is now frightened because of his circumstance. And so I just walk up behind him. And I simply call out his name. And I say, Roman. And he turns around and he lifts his eyes towards me, his father. And his confidence changed immediately. I believe that God is calling your name. He's calling you to lift your eyes to him. He's calling out to you. He's telling you to take your eyes off your situation and your circumstance. And your gaze should be focused on him. And so this morning, if you feel lost, if you feel as though you're walking around in the darkness, then recognize that Jesus is light. And he wants to illuminate your path If you feel like you're alone and you're surrounded by enemies and you have no way to be delivered, then recognize that Jesus is your salvation. He will deliver you. Give your life over to Jesus. Or maybe this this morning you are just in crisis and you feel as though you have been beaten down. Then recognize that Jesus will protect you. He will shelter you. He will be your stronghold. The times of trouble will come. The storms will come. But he can and will protect you from the storm. You only need to lift your eyes to him. Receive the confidence that comes only through Jesus. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks for your son Jesus. And we lift our eyes to you this morning, asking that you would go before us, that you would light our path, that you would deliver us, God, and that you would protect us. We love you, we trust in you, and we give you great thanks for Jesus and his work on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait.
hope you've had a wonderful experience worshiping with us online today here at Graceland Church. It's a great time that we get to celebrate all that God's doing in our midst. As we look toward next Sunday, we want to remind you we'll be having our in-person service as well as our online service going on at the same time. It's going to be a good Sunday that we're looking forward to. But in the meantime, during this week, we want to encourage you to stay in God's Word. Stay faithful to Him in prayer. Look to Him as we consider finding new ways of loving each other and loving our community. Again, thanks for joining us today.